and some of his former allies band together and in 44 BC assassinated Julius Caesar. Almost immediately, the second triumvirate was formed by his adoptive son and nephew Octavius, whom we know by the title Augustus, his former ally Mark Antony, and Marcus Aemilius Lepidus. They formed this triumvirate again to divvy up the political spoils of the city of Rome, and again, like the first triumvirate, it fell apart, ending in 31 BC in a civil war between Octavian and Antony, and Antony's new ally, Cleopatra VII of Egypt. Octavian met them off the coast of Western Greece in a naval battle called the Battle of Actium, where Octavian defeated Antony and Cleopatra, the battle being immortalized by the Cleopatra bar and grill just off the shore of this <laughs> battle site. But with the victory of Octavian, this ended now three generations of civil war. But it was not just civil war. Every time a triumvirate was formed, the members of the triumvirate exchanged amongst themselves political hit lists, men they would like to see eliminated by murder from the Roman political scene. The horrors or the massacres, the pogroms of the triumvirates were some of the famous themes of medieval and Renaissance paintings showing the purging of the body politic of the city of Rome. Well, after the last civil war and after the pogroms, Octavian finally declared amnesty, clemency, and mercy to his opponents. The ancient Stoic philosopher Seneca said of Octavian's mercy, it was nothing more than exhausted cruelty. But Octavian emerged as imperator, that is, victorious general with extensive political and military powers. Octavian emerged from it all as Augustus, the title we best know him by. It means the augmenter, the one who makes things increase or get better. Previously, it was a title reserved for deity alone. And Octavian Augustus emerged as the son of the divine Julius Caesar, the implication being obvious. If your father is divine, you too are destined for divinity. The ancient Roman author Suetonius said about Augustus and his building program in the city of Rome that Augustus found Rome a city of brick and he left it a city of marble. He completed some of the building programs begun by his uncle and adoptive father, Julius Caesar, finishing off the theater of Marcellus the Basilica Julia, and the Forum of Julius Caesar, all of which we looked at in last week's class. And then Augustus embarked upon his own building program. And that takes us first to the Forum of Augustus. His forum was aligned with the one previously built by Julius Caesar. In fact, there was a connecting passageway, and you could walk from one forum to the next. The central feature of the Forum of Augustus was the Temple of Mars Ultor, that is, Mars the Avenger, the one who avenged the assassination of Julius Caesar. The Temple of Mars Ultor was dedicated in 2 BC, and in it stood the military sword of Caesar, as well as statues of Venus, Mars, and Julius Caesar. All that remains of the Temple of Mars Ultor are the four great marble columns, which you're looking at, and the back wall, which we'll discuss momentarily. The podium is still intact, and a few of the four columns have been re-erected, as you can see. But where the large columns have survived, you have a rare glimpse up into the ceiling of a Roman temple. Now, our impression is oftentimes that there was nothing but timber A-frame roofs across the temple, which there actually would have been, but it would have been on top of these marble coffers which line the passageway between the temple proper, the wall down at the bottom, and the colonnade around it, represented by the columns itself. We have looked at the podiums of earlier Roman temples. Remember how they were essentially just rubble, architectural fragments, stone brick, and just held together with a great mass of cement. Here you can see where in the Middle Ages they quarried away part of the podium, and there's no rubble core here. This is all solid cut stone for the podium, indicating a very expensive construction. 
Now you notice that the Temple of Mars Ultor is not a pure rectangle. It has a rather odd shape, and that is because of the tremendous firewall built behind it. When Augustus started buying land to build his forum, some of the people would not sell their land. And rather than invoke the right of imminent domain, like so many governments do, Augustus decided just to let the people hold their land, and he would conform the shape of his forum to the land he was able to purchase. Now that is the great firewall which exists behind the temple of the forum. The purpose of the firewall was to keep the fires of the slums which went up the hill behind the forum from spreading down into the forum proper itself. It was a substantial wall still standing, still forms the shape of the streets in the city of Rome to this day. Here you can see at various points there are walls poked in the firewall. Those are windows from later medieval and renaissance constructions that were built up into and against the firewall. This is the original entrance coming down from the slums of the Esquiline Hill through the firewall and then down into the Forum of Augustus. Oh.